Dividend investing has to be one of the easiest ways to get more passive income. You just take some of the money that you have, you pour it into some stocks, and you get paid a dividend each month or each quarter, depending on the stocks, most of them being each quarter. And if you do put enough money into dividend stocks and you play a long game, you can make some really awesome passive income to the point where it replaces your job if you have one, or if you're an entrepreneur, it gives you more money to spend on your business or just some personal money on the side. So dividend investing is certainly a very valuable way to generate that passive income. And if you invest right, you could also get appreciation as well. So when you do go into dividend investing, it is good to set certain goals for yourself so it inspires you to work harder, to invest more, and all that good stuff. So one of the things that I thought about is, well, how can you make $100,000 each year from dividend investing? What is the math that would go into that? And some of the hidden ways that uh, it may not take as long as you think to actually hit that goal. So the first step to figuring out the math behind this is to just estimate what kind of dividend yield you can get on average. So if you say that you're going to get a 10% dividend yield, then you only need $1 million at that rate to make $100,000. The only issue with a 10% yield is that uh, a lot of companies that offer that, they may be a little sketchy, so you definitely have to check the financials because GameStop, they had a really high dividend at one point and the business there is not doing so well. So you want to make sure it is a company that has solid financials uh, instead of chasing this high dividend that may look juicy on the outside, but then you see what happens where Maybe you get the 10% dividend, but the company goes down by 20%. So uh, I like to set around 3%. That is something where uh, it's definitely achievable. And there are companies at 3% yields that aren't in financial trouble. Now, you can find some companies, more REITs than like other companies that, uh, real, REITs, by the way, being real estate investment trusts, uh, you'll find some of those hovering at around 10%. Uh, the, like some of those might be good, but again, when you see a high yield, you have to be a little careful there because you don't know, uh, it, it, because if the company's paying all this money out to shareholders, how is it reinvesting in itself? So to figure out how much money you actually need, you take your number, 100,000 per year, that's how much you want to make from this investing model, and you divide by the percent, in this case being 3%, and we pretty much get three city over here. Uh, so that's how much you need to have, uh, at a 3% yield to be making a hundred thousand dollars each year from your dividend investments. Now I know a lot of people, we don't have that kind of money sitting around, which is why this is a long-term game. And when you do divide by like 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, like you still get pretty big numbers but there is some hidden parts of the equation that make it a little easier to achieve this big goal that I said in this video, but any goal as well, whether you wanna make $1,000 a year from dividends, $10,000 a year from dividends. I'm hesitant to say like $1,000 a month from dividends just because the math's a little harder if you wanna do it by month, and the yearly way is the, the way that the yields and stuff like that are calculated. So one of these hidden factors that allows you to make more money with your dividends is something called a dividend growth rate. We're going to use SunTrust Banks in this example because uh, it's a good example. And also for people who want to own a piece of the Atlanta Braves, be able to say that that is something that you can say if you do get a piece of SunTrust Bank stock symbol uh, ticker STI. So let's say you got it on May 13th, 2016. At the time, the price was $40.56, which was good for a 2.37% yield. Uh, so out of that $40.56, you would get back $0.24 cents per quarter. Multiply that by four because quarterly payments turns to an annual $0.96 cents per year from a single share. That's how you get the 2.37% yield. Now, 
what most people think is that that's the rate they're going to receive forever. Like when you buy it 2.37%, you are locked in at 2.37% and that's how much money they're going to pay you forever. But what a lot of companies do, and this is a sign that these are good companies to invest in is they will raise the amount of money that they pay to their shareholders. So looking uh, quickly on NASDAQ right now, SunTrust Bank's actually, now does 56 cents per quarter, which is a 133.333 army of threes. Again, 100, that percentage number boost from the initial uh, yield you were getting. So now instead of 2.37, you look at that that was what it was in 2016 at that specific price I said, $40.56. Now we're looking at a 5.52% yield for that particular investment and based on current trends and based on the dividend payout ratio something we'll get into very soon it looks like sun trust is going to be able to continue to pay that dividend and continue to raise it which means they could be at 60 cents a share soon 70 cents a share soon you just give it a few years and those are some scenarios that can possibly happen so you went in there with the 2.37% yield, but now, just three years later in 2019, we're looking at a 5.52% yield instead. And if you do that math into the calculator for getting $100,000 each year, now we're looking at something that's a little more doable, under $2 million, which, you know, is still, like, far away. and. Uh, the numbers definitely look better if you know you divide by 10, you divide by 20, you divide by 30 to figure out how much money you have to put in each year to actually be at that rate. But knowing that you've got the dividend growth on your side, that growth rate is going to allow you to hit your goals sooner than you think. Another hidden factor that is going to help you is if you drip your investment. Strip standing for dividend reinvestment program. And pretty much what that means is instead of taking the cash, you take more stock. Now, for SunTrust, which we'll keep using in this example, uh, you buy at 40.56, you get the 2.37% dividend in 2016. And if you buy 100 shares at that price at that time, you get around two and a half uh, shares for literally not doing anything. Like if you just reinvest it, if you don't put any extra money into it, you are getting at least two and a half uh, new shares each year. These are shares that uh, when the dividend is raised again, now you're getting extra money from those shares. So it is something that if you reinvest, it's not going to be something that transforms your whole portfolio and your wealth right away, but it is something that kind of reduces the amount of money you need and can get you more dividend quickly because now all of a sudden you have more shares that are paying you more dividend because you're looking for companies in this scenario that are raising their dividends each year so that not only are you getting closer to the goal because of the raises, but you are getting closer because you are reinvesting what you make from dividends back into the company. That's why you have some people, you see they don't have a round number of shares. Like you could see like 125.774 shares of something. Uh, that's because these people are reinvesting the dividends, which is very smart for long-term success instead of taking that money right away. Now, there are a few key things to note also about investing in dividends. One is ideally buy up below. Obviously, you can't time the market. No one can really predict stuff. But if you find a good company that's gotten hammered by some recent news, it may be a good opportunity to jump in. Some people are seeing that with TD Ameritrade, which really went down 25% in one day because they said we're not going to do commissions anymore for trading. But if you look at the business model, it's not just the commissions that they make money from. There's a few other assets that they generate revenue from. And doing zero commission trading is going to lead to more people using their platform. So uh, this basically went down way more than it should have is what a lot of people are saying. So that could be a buy, especially at a very uh, generous dividend yield. 
with a dividend that has continued to grow year after year. Uh, and like the most recent year, it went from 21 cents per quarter to 30 cents per quarter, which uh, is a really big jump uh, from the yield from the year before to the current yield that it is now. So one of the things I said I was going to talk about a little later in the video was dividend payout ratio. And this is important in this case because TD has a dividend payout ratio of a little more than 36% right now as I'm doing this video because stuff can change literally within minutes uh, when the stock market is open. But right now it has that 36% dividend payout ratio. That basically means of all the revenue it's making, 36% of uh, that stuff is going to the shareholders and they are keeping the rest of that to reinvest in their business and to continue to grow and get new people. So this is important because if something is too high, like, you know, they have a dividend payout ratio above 50, above 60, or even above, especially above 70, you have to start wondering, is this a sustainable dividend yield? Because if these businesses, they don't make, enough money or they get hit by a recession is that sustainable so when you do look at companies uh like an at&t like a walmart that has continued to pay its investors year over year uh even during like recessions and stuff like that uh you do have to look at their dividend payout ratios and you do have to look at their financial models to uh like realize that hey these companies can still pay now, I haven't looked at the dividend payout ratios for uh, AT&T or Walmart, but they, but they are companies that have been able to pay their investors and raise their dividends consistently year over year. So that is something you want to look at when making a decision. Is this a company that only has a small amount of money uh, as, as by being sent over to investors so they can reinvest? Or is this a company where they are sending all of their money to their investors, which you know feels really awesome at the moment. You're getting this big dividend, but then you're in the GE example where you go down 50% one year and then like 90% the other year uh, with the uh, payout you're receiving from the dividends. And another thing to note about this is that businesses that pay dividends, they want to raise their dividends each year because that's going to keep the dividend investors and it's going to signal that the business is growing. If your business that does a dividend and you don't raise the dividend at the time you were expected to raise it, that's going to be a sign to a lot of shareholders that your business is stagnant or it hasn't really improved or uh, the dividend could be at risk. Uh, the moment there's an inconsistency there, that's when people get a little nervous and they sell their shares. So these companies, they are going to predictably raise their uh, dividend payouts to send that warm message to investors. So that's why like TD and a bunch of these other companies, like they have raised their dividends year over year, even if it's by a little bit like GE, like before the big drop, like they were even trying to raise about like one cent uh, per quarter just to show that, Hey, we still have a growing dividend in play. We are okay. We are not in trouble. Uh, because usually a growing dividend yield uh, growing payout typically means that, hey, we're growing, we're making more money. And since we're making all this extra money, we're able to reward you, the shareholders, just a little more. So with all this in mind, how long does it take to make $100,000 each year of passive income from dividend stocks? And the answer is that it depends on each person. The amount of money you put in now and where you put that money is that are you just putting it in a stock that isn't growing or is in trouble with the high payout ratio or are you putting it into a stock that has demonstrated it grows its dividend each year and has a payout ratio where you feel like it could still keep making dividend payments uh so those factors will really determine how long it takes to make that hundred thousand dollars each year in dividend payouts but you're not just getting the payouts if you pick the right stocks. You're also getting the appreciation. In that example I mentioned about SunTrust, you're not just getting the big dividend appreciation there, but you're also getting the actual stock appreciation. So there is more uh, market share gain and not just gain from the dividend, which is also pretty nice. 
So the more money you put in now, the easier it is for you to hit those big income goals later. The only thing I will say though is if you believe the prices are going to go lower because there is a lot of talk about a potential recession, then you may want to always keep a, uh, a spare cash in case you see one of those opportunities. Like the reason that uh, I have the ability to react and like make a purchase for TD is because I always have uh, extra cash sitting around for these kinds of moments. This is something Warren Buffett also does because when you have all of your money tied up in equities or real estate or other investments, if you see a big opportunity, it's harder for you to jump on it uh, than if you have some money that is available for opportunities such as those. So uh, that is just one thing to keep in mind. But at the end of the day, the earlier you get started, the sooner you see these results and the uh, appreciation, the raise of the dividend payments each year will help you to achieve your goals faster. So something that looks like could take you 30 years, if you keep putting money in and you keep investing, could take you like 10 to 20 years or even less depending on what you invest in and how much you put in each month. Until the next video, dream big, achieve greatness, and unlock your potential today.